Hi, Ron Davidson here. I am sitting at my workbench in our workshop located here in downtown Vancouver. This is where we create all the incredible custom pieces that we ship all over the world. Now I'm very fortunate as I have a very gifted group of goldsmiths working for me and we can do virtually anything you can imagine. And I am taking the opportunity in this video to show you the partial construction of a ring that we just had a client order. Now this gentleman was very particular in the details of what he wanted and it is very intricate and a very, very beautiful ring. So we've already started some of the construction, but we're going to show some of the highlights of the more detailed work that we do and we will follow it through right to the setting of the center stone at the very end. So let's get started. Okay, now here we are at my bench pin, um, and this is the ring so far. Now we've already made the white gold part of the ring. Um, it's not totally finished or polished yet. And what we've done is added, let me get a little pointer here. We have put a ruby as a highlight stone right here. And then the handmade filigree, this ring has handmade filigree, and you can see we put in the filigree scrolls on each side of the shoulder here. Now let me flip it around, and we've actually pretty well finished the other side, or I should say I have finished the other side. This is actually my specialty, and true handmade filigree is a bit of a lost art, and there's very few people that do it. And 99% of the filigree rings you see out there, the filigree is actually put into the mold or into the wax model. And there's no way you can get the same sort of detail or crispness as handmade filigree. So you can see on this side, we're pretty well done other than a final polish. Now, true handmade filigree, and I'll show you, I start with a sheet of gold. Now this is a very thin ribbon of gold here. Now it is black because uh, we annealed it. So we take a torch and heat it up and that softens it so it allows me to bend it into the filigree shapes or scrolls that I need. Now it's incredibly thin, I'll put it on end and you can see it is actually about 0.3 of a millimeter in thickness. So there's no way once again that in a mass produced ring that you can have that thickness, it just won't turn out. The other thing too is that if you do a molded ring or a mass production ring, you can't have the two-tone color here. It all has to be one color. So this ring is made in 19 karat white gold and then the filigree is actually in yellow gold. And I have a little filigree piece here that is bent, so let me just show it to you. Hopefully we can see it well enough here. Um, that is a little scroll that I've been working on. And I actually have special pliers and special bending tools, very, very small. And I do all of this underneath a microscope. And that way you get great detail and great accuracy. And there is absolutely no substitute for handmade filigree. Now, it is very time consuming and it does add a little bit of value to the setting of the, of the ring. But I personally believe it's one of the most stunning effects that you can do on a ring. So. Let me uh, continue on here and then I'll show you more highlights as I go along. Now I'm actually working under my microscope right now and I have the piece of thin metal and I have these specialty pliers so I'm doing the first bend. And there you can see how I've done the first bend. And then I will keep on bending it and I'll do a second curve on it. And then what I'll do is fit it into the area that I'm working on. So um, it is very time consuming and each one has to be done individually. Okay, I've now finished the next piece of filigree that's going in and I'll just hold it up right there. And you can see the little scroll that I've done. It's almost like a stylized S, um, and it takes a while to do this. I've been working on this piece for about 45 minutes. Now, good filigree should be a very tight fit, so it fills up the gap 100%, so I have to kind of push it in a little bit to get it in there. And what happens with 
the filigree is you make it much wider than you need it. So once I get it in there, I will weld it into place. And I have a microscopic laser welder that is a wonderful tool. I actually have two of them. I was one of the first workshops in all of Canada to have this technology. Uh, we actually use laser beams now to weld uh, the metal instead of using solder and torches. And you just get a much, much better end result. So there it is. The filigree is in there. Now it's sticking out. And all I'll do is I'll put the filigree on the other side of that ruby. And then what I'll do is polish it and uh, flatten it so that it fits perfectly into that space. I've now put in the last piece of filigree and I've gone to the laser welder and it's all lasered in. And I laser it from the inside. So from the outside, when you're looking at the workmanship, you can't even see how it's attached. Now, what I have to do now is grind out the extra filigree because it's sticking out of the opening that I have for it. So I have this special wheel. It's um, an abrasive wheel. And what I just basically do is under the microscope again, I just shape it. And basically I grind away at the filigree very slowly until I have it level with the outside of the white gold ring. So now I've taken down that one piece of filigree and you can see now how it's nice and level with the lower circle and the upper circle of the white gold ring. So I'll just go ahead and finish the other side and then I'll show you polishing and then it's ready to go to our diamond setter. I now have those filigree sides uh, flush with the metal. So what I'm doing now is polishing them. This is a special wheel that actually puts a high polish and it allows me to get into all the little nooks and crannies and do a perfect job even under a microscope. And I was actually taught by a Swiss master and what he always told me is don't be happy with the piece until it looks perfect under a 10 power microscope. Yeah. And I've been doing that for 30 years. So I'm just putting in the polish here. Now you can't really see in great detail what I've done here because there's bits of the polishing wheel caught in the filigree, but there it is. So that's all polished now and it's ready to go to the diamond setter. Now the ring is with our diamond setter and he has actually pre-drilled all the holes. That's all done by hand on the sides. And he's just positioning the diamonds. You can see there's three in there. And then he's using a tool to push down the little prongs that he's created by hand. Very intricate, detailed work. And we're lucky to have one of the finest diamond setters in Canada working in-house for us. Now the diamond setter is working on the halo, which is the circle of diamonds that go around the center stone. So he's just drilling the seats and just preparing it to put the small diamonds that are going in that halo. 
and these diamonds are also all Canadian diamonds. So they're cut from Canadian rough and they come from Canada's Arctic. Now the diamond setter has set all the side stones, so we're left to set the center stone. Now the center stone here it is. It is a magnificent uh, Canadian diamond. It is a carat 62 and it is what is called an AGS, American Gemological Society, triple ideal. This is an incredible stone. It's a beautiful color and clarity, F color, BS1 clarity. And with that certification and the color and clarity, it puts it in the top 1% of all diamonds in the world. So what I have to do is cut the seat for the stone. So I have what is called a setting burr here. And you can see it here. It has uh, the same shape as the bottom side of the diamond itself. So I have to go in and cut. I'm going to be blocking it here for a second. Okay, now I gotta position the diamond in place and just see if I'm happy with the height and the positioning of it. Okay, I'm going to put it just a little bit lower. Again, I'm just having a look here and just adjusting it just to make sure that we get the perfect height for the stone. And that's looking pretty good now. So now I will go and bend down the claws. Yeah, I'm just going to take it out and just examine it to make sure I got the height perfect and that everything is even on the stone. And I'm just bending the claws over. And that's what's going to hold the stone in place. And it's basically done. Now I'm going to do something that people cringe at when they see it live. Is I'm going to take my saw blade and I'm going to cut the extra length of the claws off and that saw blade is actually going to go in contact with the diamond and that's where people cringe but all it does is wreck my saw blade because diamonds are so hard that it doesn't even put a scratch or a mark on the diamond.
And that's basically it. So now all I have to do is shape these claws just a little bit and put a final polish on them, and then I'll show you the finished piece. And finally, here is the finished piece, and it is absolutely stunning. Whoever is getting this ring is extremely lucky. Now I'll give you a side view as well so you can see that filigree work and the accent stones that we put on it.